Hello, I'm Hamilton Morris. We're currently boating through a flooded forest on our way to meet the Mayaruna Indians, a formerly cannibalistic tribe who use a strange frog-derived drug they call sapo. They use it to give themselves energy before hunting. They use it to abort pregnancies by rubbing these women's vaginas with it. This venom contains an opioid peptide that's a hundred times stronger than morphine. And uh, some people say that it's psychedelic. It doesn't activate any of the psychedelic receptors as far as I know, but there's also a lot about the venom that we don't know. The venom produces some kind of a strange effect. It makes you vomit and, uh, and then supposedly you spend the next eight hours in some kind of a days and uh, wake up feeling fantastic the next day. And uh, they're going to ritualistically burn me and rub the frog venom into my wounds and then it's going to produce some sort of a strange effect. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to do, but we'll find out. Thank you for flying with the Republic of the Hope Islands. I have arrived in Tabatinga after days of traveling. It's an impossibly humid rainforest city built by drug traffickers and sandwiched between the borders of Colombia and Peru. I feel like I'm being gang-banged by vegetation. Every visible surface is coated with growing plants. The streets are overrun with motorcycles, scooters, and mopeds. I can feel that the jungle is near. I go to the dock, where the journey will begin and meet our guide, Juan. Before we exchange a word, he looked at my long hair and started laughing hysterically. He said the Mayaruna Indians are going to think I'm a woman. They're going to kidnap me as a wife. Then he repeated the joke a million times during the course of our day. La mano. <laughs> I board a boat, which is a 30-foot-long canoe with a wicker awning in the middle. I meet the other crew member, a man introduced as the captain, who will run the boat's small motor. We make a quick stop to pick up a giant block of filthy frozen river water. The ice block is dragged out of the freezer through a heap of bloody gutted catfish. The captain then proceeds to smash up the ice blocks with a rusty machete and throw the chunks into a couple of styrofoam coolers which will hold our minuscule food supply. Juan says the ice will last six days, but that seems totally impossible. We're on the Amazon River right now. We're still on the border of Peru, Brazil, and Colombia with Colombia this way, Brazil this way, and Peru that way. Because of its proximity to Colombia and Peru, Tabatinga has become one of the main entry points for cocaine traffickers into Brazil. I'm told the chance of us encountering cocaine being shuttled around is not too low. The rainy season is when the Amazon River swells over the land and life hemorrhages out of everything in sight. There are trees growing on trees, ants crawling on ants, and penis fish swimming up the urethra of other penis fish. It's exhausting to watch. In order to save time, we take a detour through the flooded jungle. Our crew 
crew consists of Juan in front with the machete, the captain in the back motoring us around, and Alex, who is in charge of security should we run into any hostile drug traffickers. But that's sort of something that hasn't been discussed in too much detail at this point, I guess. It's gonna be three days upriver. Each night we're going to stay on the side of the river in some sort of a shack, and then we find the Mayaruna. chegando na comunidade de Boa Vista. Você está vendo que agora está alagado, né? The sun sets and we dock at the home of some strangers. The river surrounds their home and reaches up to their doorstep. Apparently, families living on the river are obliged to take in travelers. Here we are on the banks of the Javari River. This is where we're going to be spending the night tonight. These are our hammocks, complete with mosquito-proof netting. It's a very nice view of the river. Here's the bathroom. Consists of uh, a board with two holes cut in it. I'm not exactly even sure what to do with it or what it means. I just peed into the hole that had the most pee surrounding it. This seems like a pretty authentic Amazon experience. I like this dog. I think he likes me. Night comes, and our hosts cook us a chicken meal. I'm ready to eat some chicken, get some fitful sleep, and then spend another day on the boat. Definitely mosquitoes inside my uh, tent. I could like hear them buzzing next to my face as I was sleeping, but it was too dark to do anything. in the morning right now. Last night we stayed at someone's house and uh, there was a big debate about whether it was okay to bathe because the bathing water was right next to the peeing and shitting water. <laughs> and, uh, and there really didn't even seem to be any reason to bathe because it's only the second day. I didn't feel the need, but a lot of other people on our crew decided that it was hot and they would sleep better <laughs> after they washed their hair.
Around 11 in the morning, we stop for a bite to eat. Alex stabs open a can of wieners with a giant chrome hunting knife. I eat a few, and they taste like wet toilet paper. Every time we stop for someone to pee, flocks of majestic yellow butterflies swarm around us. I'm gonna go pee into this flock of butterflies right now. Here we are in another flooded forest region. It's pretty spectacular, actually. We're just floating on the treetops. We're floating halfway up a forest. The river is like S-shaped, but since it's the rainy season, we're able to cut through sections of forest that have flooded. I mean, this isn't normally a river. It's only a river six months of the year, or maybe even less. We're just floating by the top of a tree. It's like very strange. Around noon, I have to shit off the side of the boat while everyone films me. Not fun. I was definitely poisoned many times over by last night's chicken dinner. I sincerely fear that I may shit my only pair of pants. Fantastic. I recently learned that we were on this expedition illegally. FUNAI, the Brazilian agency dedicated to Indian affairs, patrols these waters looking for unlicensed groups like ours who are trying to contact the Indians. Juan also tells me the Amazon is full of creatures scientists know nothing about. Once, while deep in the jungle, he encountered a fur-covered beast with only one eye. Him and the beast exchanged a glance, and as a result, Juan suffered a five-month-long fever. I had been smoking JWH-18 laced cigarettes and was too high to be skeptical, so instead, I opted for extreme fear. Besides Funai, we have plenty to worry about. There's rampant malaria and hepatitis epidemics, the waters are infested with piranhas, snakes, and kendiru penis fish, and the air is filled with biting insects. The homes along the river are becoming further and further apart, and we dock early today with a small family living on the shore. The air is vibrating with swarms of mosquitoes. I have never seen anything like this in my life. The insects are impossibly bloodthirsty, and they remove a plug of flesh when they bite. In minutes, my hands are covered with bleeding, swollen sores. This water is from the river? No, no. I'm just hoping that uh, I don't get bitten too terribly tonight and uh, that the food doesn't poison me too severely. How much food do you have? Some 10. 10? 
Caraca! <risos> e fora que morreu. Hum. Eu tenho um, uma, uma, uma mulherzinha e dois hominhos. São três mortos. Hum. Night falls and the incredible number of bugs discourages me from bathing once again. I lay in my hammock while mosquitoes squeal past my ears. The mosquito net and bug spray are only a formality at this point. There is no escape. I wake up totally massacred by bugs. It would be much easier to describe where I don't have mosquito bites. My hair, fingernails, asshole, and the inside of my mouth. <sighs> we take a Polaroid of our host's daughter, give it to her, and get out of there. Today, we are scheduled to arrive at the Mayaruna village, the ancient village of the frog. I still haven't bathed, but I think that's going to change soon because I want to look my best for the Mayaruna. I have uh, mosquito bites on every square inch of my body. My neck is just like a necklace of searing pain that, well, I don't even know how they were able to target my neck, but, uh, well, I'm miserable right now. It's been uh, four days since I've bathed, four incredibly sweaty days. It's been a long time since I've taken off my pants. <laughs> We see the Mayaruna around midday. They live on top of an orange cliff that juts straight out of the river. Children peer over the edge at us and then run to our boat to carry our bags up the cliff. The clay crumbles under my feet. If I fall, I am three days from the nearest hospital. So it's actually very refreshing to be here, although it's extremely hot. The Mayaruna village is a collection of huts spread across a large dusty clearing. The insects are prehistoric. As of now, the plan is to go out tonight and catch the frog, and then in the morning after the frog has been caught, we'll harvest the secretions and uh, burn me and rub them into my wounds. We walk into the hut of our host, a man named Petro. His face is covered in tattoos he gave himself with a tree thorn needle and black fungus ink. Mm -hmm. 
Juan asks Petro if he thinks I'm a woman. Petro says no. Juan looks defeated. This is the stick. You can actually see some dried sapo. It's a moldy bread type smell, definitely. The chief's son takes me to his pharmacy, which is a hut stockpiled with a modest supply of antibiotics. Ibuprofen, aspirin, neo ampicillin. It's very good. It makes me feel like if I come close to death uh, after my SAPO administration, they will be able to slap me with some uh, ampicillin. It's just nice to see people are on top of medicine. It's good. I could go for some uh, ice cold lemonade right now. <laughs> Here we are outside waiting for the frog to sing. Even though it's the rainy season, it hasn't rained in days, and usually the frog doesn't make any sounds unless it's wet. So we're just waiting. It might be hours and hours and hours before it makes any sound at all. But uh, right now I'd like to just have an ice cream cone and, uh, and maybe, a, maybe a cool glass of lemonade. A little bit before dawn, Petro hears the song and calls back to the sapo, imitating its bark. He runs out of the hut, into the jungle, and out of sight. He returns half an hour later, empty-handed. It's 5.20 in the morning right now. Uh, they just came back out of the woods and said that they didn't hear it after all. If it rains, then the frog will sing and, and we'll go into the woods. But until then, I will return to my hammock and uh, continue waiting. Hard-boiled eggs and bread, and uh, that would appear to be it. The accumulating mosquito bites are starting to cripple me. I can barely use my hands anymore. I count 52 bites on my left hand and 51 bites on my right hand, which is so swollen I cannot make a fist. It got me on my belly really badly. Just like all here. It's incredibly itchy. Oh. It just started raining, it was pouring for a while now, it's just drizzling, the sun is gonna come out soon, and uh, we've been assured by our host, Petro, that the frog will sing tonight. And in the meantime, I think we're just going to wait in our hammocks and try to escape the swarms of insects until the sun sets. <laughs> I give Petro a copy of Vice, and he indicates that it would make good masturbation material. The rain ends, and the midday sun breaks through the clouds. The heat and the insects come back with a vengeance. 
I've barely left the hut today. It's actually so hot that I uh, can barely stand. And, um, and even if I were to leave the hut, there's very, very little to do. You can actually just laying in the hammocks, you can hear the sound, the collective sound of all the insects swarming around everything. It's just like a loud buzz. And uh, the sun is so hot that I would, well, I mean, I will. I actually haven't even been outside today. I'll go outside and have a look, but it's, uh, well, actually, I just took a Ritalin, so I'm feeling sort of energetic. Maybe I'll uh, go outside and see what's going on. Oh, it's not that bad. Paradise. <laughs> oh my god. These animals, it's like... <sighs> Holy shit. Oh, this is, this, this is a swarming. This is how my... <sighs> it's actually just... I'm already covered in my own blood from these creatures. Oh my god. Well, this is why I'm staying inside. It's really just... It's terrifying. Night comes and we sit half awake, listening for the frog song. While writing in my diary, I hear some commotion outside. I decide to go out and investigate. We just ran into some trouble because uh, the chief's son got news on the radio that Funai is coming to check on this tribe in a couple days, probably even tomorrow, and we still haven't found the frog. Funai is the Brazilian organization that uh, that that protects these indigenous groups and. If they find out that we're here without a license, we're here illegally, we'll have to get the fuck out of here without the frog, and uh, I have a feeling our guide will be in big trouble. So, it's essential that we get the frog tonight and that Funai doesn't arrest us all. Around two in the morning, the sapo sings, and again, we all rush into the jungle. Good Petro, our host, calls to it every now and then, um, but I don't think he's having any luck finding it. I'm not sure normally how long it takes to find it. Now it's morning, we're trying to figure out what to do. Funai is on its way, it'll be arriving today. The frog, the frog uh, sang, but we were unable to find it, and now it's day, so. We don't know what the fuck to do. This is our third day with the Mayaruna Indians. I have mosquito-induced shell shock and swat constantly at insects that are not even there. 
Here you go. We hand out batteries, pens, <laughs> notebooks, t-shirts, and other trash. As a parting gift, Petro's wife gives me a grass bracelet she had just made. We have officially run out of food, but fortunately, a child offers to kill a chicken for us. Didn't catch the frog. Funai is coming. We've got to run. Moments before we killed it, the chicken ran away. So, onward. The child eventually finds and kills the chicken and brings its limp body back to us. As he plucks the dead chicken, Juan tells us of another place downriver where we might be able to find the frog. Goodbye. It's nice to meet all of you. We say goodbye to the Mayaruna and get out of there fast to avoid Funai. I loved them, they were great. I learned a lot. It's good. It was time that we went, though. We start heading towards the floating home of a shaman downriver. We all sincerely hope that he can help us find the frog. We're at this house right now, trying to buy some fresh fish from the river. house is absolutely covered in butterflies and looks pretty nice. Oh, little chicks. This is just like the house of, uh, of incredibly cute animals coming from hell into the chick and butterfly sanctuary. Oh yeah, that's, that's fresh fish. Oh, what's in the way now? Well, what's we were given a bag of fresh fish for free, which is extremely unusual, considering we had to uh, we had to pay about 150,000 batteries and 6,000 cigarettes and 100 million T-shirts for uh, for this earlier. <laughs> um, it's very nice to get a free fish. Goyaba. Get it? We're approaching the shaman's house right now. In a few minutes, we'll know for sure whether or not he can help us. Oh wow, look at that. <laughs> King Asma with the toucan is friendly. <laughs> And there's a small monkey walking around on the ground. Oh, it's the most incredibly cute thing I've ever seen in my life. Just want to rub its little head.
it seems like there's a lot of wildlife around here. So we're gonna go out on a boat later tonight looking for the frog and, uh, and see what we can dig up. This is our dinner tonight. Four fish for six people. I'm extremely hungry. I, uh, they're not especially big fish. But we can supplement it with canned wieners if I'm still hungry afterwards. Our captain is out fishing as we speak, so hopefully we'll grab a few more by, uh, Dinner time. Drag nets through the water before dinner, but keep catching the Kandiru penis fish. It's truly a horrifying sight, with razor sharp retractable fangs which whip in and out of its face in a split second. Quando assim com 10, 15 minutos tu vai tirar a pessoa e até que vai comendo quase assim um braço, uma perna, ou o que ele pegar. Mira, mira. Tem uns mais pequeno que entra pela venta. E muitas vezes quando a pessoa está mexendo dentro da água, porque tem muitas pessoas tiram o pipi dentro da água e mexem, né? E aí ele entra pelo pipi. E uma vez que entrou para dentro vai destorando as tripas todinho. E aí quem? Apparently it likes to swim up assholes as well. I think I'll avoid bathing for a bit. We eat rice and river fish for dinner. If the shaman's home has everything from toucan to penis fish, I am confident we will find the frog. It's 4.30 in the morning, we heard the frog. Our host jumped into a canoe and went out to find it. We haven't seen him since, and I don't know what's going on. He's somewhere out in the trees. I wait one hour for him to come back. This is becoming very discouraging. I begin to wonder if we're ever going to find this mysterious little frog. Day six, the shaman just arrived. We asked him if he could help us with the frog. He said he wasn't sure, but in the meantime, he said that he could help us brew some ayahuasca. It's not my first time drinking ayahuasca. But they've been saying that if you've had it in the United States, it's not the same thing. It's much stronger, mas fuerte in the Amazon. And uh, we've got nothing else to do while we wait for the frog, so why not? We're trekking through the forest right now collecting the necessary plants to brew some ayahuasca. They said it was only two minutes in, but it looks like it might be a bit further. This is our first expedition on dry land. I 
feet are in pain. I'm getting blisters from these fucked up boots we're wearing. It's too thick to move. We're really seriously deep in the jungle right now. Keeping an eye out for the frog while we're here, but I somehow doubt it's this deep in the jungle. You found it. ¿Cómo se llama? Ayahuasca. La planta se llama ayahuasca. Sí, ayahuasca. I believe this is the ayahuasca vine, although it looks different from what I've seen in the past. Usted mistura eso con otra planta? No. No, esta es purita. Puro. Puro, puro. Puro. There is an inevitable confusion when discussing ayahuasca because there are about 150 different names for it. It's not just one specific thing, it's a mixture of plants as well. The vine alone does not produce the psychedelic experience. The vine activates a DMT-containing plant, but in and of itself, it's not especially interesting. I ask for different DMT-containing plants, but he does not have access to any of them. We're in the middle of this drug-infested forest. There's plants everywhere. DMT is an incredibly common substance to be found in plants. There are hundreds and hundreds of DMT containing plants, but uh, this guy doesn't know about any around here. He only has this MAOI containing vine, which will fuck me up most definitely, but is not what I'm looking for. Without the DMT, the vine is like one fiftieth of the experience. Won't make me hallucinate, it won't give me cosmic revelation. I'll just be like out of it for six hours or something. I think it's best that we take the vine and uh, use it later once we find some DMT containing plants and in the meantime wait for the frog. Now we've got to go back to our house on the river and wait for nighttime. Hopefully the frog will show up and uh, and all of this will be worth it. But as of now, this is totally fucked up. We made it out alive. So that's that. A week of pain and terror, and I'm frogless in the Amazon with half of the plants needed to make ayahuasca. just heard the frog sing. Juan and the captain went out in one of the canoes. They're in the woods right now looking for the frog and uh, hopefully they'll catch it. Nada the captain started climbing it, but stuck his hand in a beehive and had to paddle away. They're gonna wait until the day and then try and chop down the tree and catch the frog that way. We're getting closer. <laughs> Early in the morning, a miracle happens. The shaman finds the frog in the jungle and leaves it for us in a nearby tree.
Esse aqui é o sapo. Esse daqui que eu vou falar do doutor. Uau, 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 uau. Oh my god, it's just a beautiful, gigantic creature. We've been searching for this for five days now. I can't even believe it. We finally have it. We actually caught the frog. We actually have it. Philo Medusa bicolor. Okay. Come, come to me. Oh, oh my God! It's. Is it on my head? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> it's on my ass? Yeah, on your ass. Is it hanging off the bottom of my ass? Yes, it is. Really? Yeah. Well, can someone get it off my ass? <laughs> Where is it actually? On your ass still. He likes it there. Opa. Come to me. Oh. Oh. These strange rubber fingers. It could be placebo, but I swear I can feel, like, a sensation in my hands from where it's touched me. We got on the boat and started rowing towards the mouth of the jungle. Oh! He jumped! Suddenly, the frog dives into the river. I peer over the boat, but he's already 10 feet away, jetting through the water towards a tree. <laughs> The shaman's son steps into a canoe and cuts him off in the water. The frog jumps inside the canoe and we carry him to the shore. posts right now and uh, they're going to string up the frog by its arms and legs and then scrape its skin secretions. Juan and the captain tie grass ropes around his arms and legs as if he was about to be drawn and quartered. Once the frog is strung up completely then we'll start to tickle it and uh, hopefully it will start to sweat out its venom which contains a number of psychoactive drugs. They string the frog up vertically and then start to jab his sides with a sharpened stick to encourage him to secrete the venom. This is being done for my sake and it's making me a bit queasy. The frog starts to glisten with psychoactive jelly. The jelly is gathered onto a wooden pallet. The captain volunteers to go first. He's the only person who has used the sapo in the past and he's the only person besides myself who intends to use it now. Juan lights a stick on fire and gets a glowing orange. The captain does not react. 
He takes two more burns the same way, and then Juan begins to rub the jelly into all three wounds. Does he feel anything? Yeah. He's beginning to feel it. <laughs> the captain stands with a far off look in his eye. Then he sits down and puts his head in his hands. He says that everything is spinning and that he can feel it in his gut. They pour a bucket of water over his burns and head because they think it will counteract the venom. <laughs> <laughs> and then the captain jumps into the piss river he looks at me and says that he's fine now it's my turn Juan picks up a stick off the ground and lights it on fire it's much thicker than the sticks the Maya Runa use. No sensation yet, no sensation yet. Now it stings. The sight of the burn now hurts a lot more than when he initially did it. Still no psychoactive effect, no psychedelic effect, no visual distortions. Gracias, gracias. Nothing at first, then slowly an opiated high creeps over me, a drunken headedness. It feels good. I feel high <clears throat> or sort of a little bit dissociated. It's not necessarily unpleasant. <laughs> What's your feeling right now, man? Very little. I mean, I feel an extreme pain in my arm where I was burned and had venom rubbed in the wound. Mm -hmm. And I feel a little bit high. Um, in a good way. <laughs> Let me get one more. You got it that time? Did you get it that time? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's Good, yeah, everybody make sure to touch it. Oh, God, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh. <laughs> Juan then reapplies the poison jelly to my wounds. Get it in the wound. Get it reapplied to the other wounds while you're at it. Oh. Okay, please fan me. <laughs> I mean, if they need to give me a thousand of these, I'll fucking do it. Now there's a, a new sensation taking over a arm, like a, like a like it's falling asleep, like a pins and needles sort of sensation. It's happening in both of my hands, like I'm losing sensation in both my hands. It's feeling more sinister now. It's very strange. My mind is saturated with a distinct, um, drunken weirdness. It's bad. It's unpleasant. Part of me wants to lay down, and just like lay down in the hammock or something. <laughs> ah, gracias, gracias.
I feel like a frog. <laughs> The people that surround me ban me like I'm an emperor. I lay shirtless on a plastic tarp. My stomach is in excruciating pain. The frog and me exchange a glance. If they think I should do another one, I would consider doing another one. I request a fourth burn, more sapo than the captain. Who's the muhair now? <laughs> Numero quattro. Oh wow, yeah. I'm feeling much more strongly in my head now. Yeah. The drunkenness in my head is very strong. Some mild closed eye visuals, but it does feel slightly psychedelic. I think it might be best for me to lay in my hammock now. <clears throat> Unless they think I should wash my wings. I'm feeling extremely woozy. The captain insists that I submerge myself in the shit river in order to sober myself up. I say I don't want to. There's no pharmacological reason that getting wet would clear the venom from my bloodstream, but he insists, so I let him pour gasoline jugs of piss over my head. Já tiramos todo o leite, agora nós vamos soltar para ir para a mata de novo. É. Agora. Pronto. As the frog is returned to a tree, I lay down in the boat because I'm feeling extremely nauseous. The poison that was still in my blood begins working its purging magic. The captain takes me out to a private clearing on the edge of the river. For most people, the frog causes uncontrollable vomiting, but I did the frog on an empty stomach. So in my case, the purge came the other way. Aspects of the experience were euphoric, and I would consider repeating it, but I'm pretty certain I could achieve the exact same effects by rubbing the jelly inside my nose. Neither the water nor the purging made me sober, and I lay in my hammock feeling dissociated and nauseous for the next three hours. I feel really fucked up, really exhausted, like I just ate a pound of Valium, and uh, I don't feel too great. I think I could still vomit at any moment. Um, oh, my stomach is, yeah, just an awful turmoil. I wake up today feeling like shit. I do not have supernatural powers, nor do I have a resistance to thirst or hunger. How these drug rumors get started, I have no idea. Indians, right? I eat an egg for breakfast and pet the monkey orphan's head one last time. Goodbye, little monkey. I wish him the best. I hope he grows up big and strong and that he's treated like a, a child. 
Mexico. Then it's time for gift giving. We give the shaman's family our hammocks, our boots, as well as an erotic porcelain statuette of two pigs making love, which they seem to cherish. Gracias, obrigado, gracias, gracias. Gracias, obrigado. Uh, I like them. So we got what we wanted. I did the frog. It was insane. I have the scars right now, which are uh, starting to heal. But we also went into the jungle and got a giant bale of ayahuasca vine. And uh, it left me a little hungry for some ayahuasca. So once we get back to Tabatinga, we're gonna look around. Apparently it's very common to find the DMT containing leaves and uh, we'll mix up some ayahuasca on our own. Returning to the city fills me with an incredible joy. My mosquito bites become less itchy, my sun burns less peely, and my intestine less colonized by parasites. The skies are clear, and the banks of the Amazon are monotonously beautiful. Tomorrow, I will prepare the magical brew. Tonight, I rest. Tabatinga and we're on our way to meet the ayahuasca shaman who's going to give us something they call toe, which I think is the DMT containing plant. Because when we were still in the jungle, the shaman there only gave us half of the ayahuasca brew. So now we're going to get the rest and we'll mix it up at the hotel. We arrive at the shaman's house, and I'm surprised to find it's a wizened old woman wearing an all-pink outfit. We ask her if she has two way to sell to us. She tells us she does, but that if I were to drink it, I would permanently lose my mind. Can you ask her if Tue has other names? De Peruana, su nombre es Tuez. De, de Colombia, el nombre es Borrachera. She leads us through her house and then out to her garden of medicinal plants. She brings us to a plant and tells us that is Tue. This is the Tue, I'm assuming. Some people are calling it the Colombian devil's breath. They call it a angel's trumpet, devil's trumpet. It's a delirium. It will give me a miserable nightmare trip. And uh, this is what the shaman was telling me that I needed to get. It was uh, this devil's trumpet stuff, which is, it's good we cleared that up. And uh, he didn't have any on him at the time, because that would have been really unfortunate for me. She then brings me to another corner of her garden, <laughs> where we see a small tree with lush green leaves. This is on the chacron. This is the chacron. Sí. Mm, fantastic. This is the Chacruna or Psychotria viridis plant. Um, it contains DMT and pretty much nothing else. This is, I think, the, the gold standard for uh, ayahuasca and brewing. We pay for the Chacruna and leave for our hotel with all the ingredients needed to brew ayahuasca. Our hotel was nice enough to let me use their kitchen brewing ayahuasca for the rest of the afternoon. In two hours, I'll strain what's left, and that will be that. Here we are at our hotel room in Tabatinga, and I just finished brewing the ayahuasca. This is the MAOI, it's the ayahuasca vine. Definitely the worst thing I've ever tasted, and I've tasted a lot of terrible, terrible drugs. But uh, I'm gonna try and get through about half of this. Here I go. Okay. 
little tips. It's too difficult to swallow big ones. Around sunset, I start drinking the vine. It's truly the most awful tasting substance on the planet, and each sip takes me within a nano gag of vomiting. Sip, gag, sip, gag. The vine hits me like a tsunami of warm milk. I've never been so drowsy in my life. I then drink the chacruna leaves. I fall asleep and have strange apocalyptic dreams. As I fall deeper into an ayahuasca-induced trance, strange visions and dark premonitions overtake me. In the midst of these visions, I realize that the sapo is only one amphibian enigma in an endless jungle of mind-altering mysteries. There is so much territory left to explore. Hypnotic giraffe bone marrow in Sudan, sedative sea sponges in the Caribbean, dream fish of the Pacific Ocean, narcotic silkworms in China, and unknown synthetics from magical laboratories across the globe. Whoa. Oh my god. <laughs> The ayahuasca makes me extremely tired. I take a Ritalin to combat the sleepiness. Yep. I guess it's time for a walk. Coma juice. <laughs> oh. This just made me into a thousand year old man. It's really just like the boat we were in. It's the exact same boat. Only, uh, it's a lot. There's a lot more feathers in the boat we were on. And that's one hammock in the middle. It's a one person. Frog was good. What's next?